friends, it's Jamie from Play to Learn Preschool. Thank you for joining me this Monday afternoon. I'm on a little bit later than normal. I uh, planned to go on right after my students left this morning and then my husband surprised me and came home from work early and took me out for a little lunch date. So, see this big smile? It means I had adult time today in the middle of the afternoon. Hi, I hope you had a great weekend. Thank you guys so much for your fun and encouraging compliments on our our spring fever video from Friday. We appreciate knowing that other people have crazy days. And I also feel like I should apologize if we ever made you think like we don't, because we definitely do. We're real preschool, we're real you know, teachers with real kids, so we definitely have crazy days. I apologize that we don't make more videos about them. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about our insect unit. Hi! Um, we are starting a new unit because it's a new month of May, learning all about insects and their life cycles. And the carpet, I'll stop for a second. Hi, 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 hi. The carpet is hot pink. So you know, I, on Friday we spilled purple ink all over our carpet. The carpet cleaners were able to get the blue out and now it's just this big hot pink mess. So I put a rug over it. It's all good. Hi, 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 I missed you too. So in May, we're learning all about insects. I think it is so important every time we're teaching our students about a new concept that we give them something in their hands to hold on to while they're learning about it. We did a video about when we introduced plants, how we have this bouquet of flowers and everybody gets one. They can touch it, smell it, pick it apart, listen to it. We don't encourage tasting it. Um, but you know, they get that whole sensory experience. We do it when we read the gingerbread man in December. I bring a big root of ginger and let them smell it. We taste gingerbread cookies. Um, we do it you know, with, with winter, we bring in a bucket of snow. We try to always give our kids this hands-on tactile experience um, so that they can start to think about and make connections to what we're learning about. In May, we're doing insects, which means that as great as a little plastic insects are and as great as books are, we really want to give them that real hands-on experience, which can be totally intimidating sometimes, right? So. Instead of getting freaked out about it, today I'm going to share four ideas for bringing real insects into your classroom for your students to observe and learn from and, and watch. And, um, and then I'll also tell you kind of where I got them. So these are gonna go from easy to hard and hopefully um, it will give you some inspiration for bringing those real objects in for your kids to see and observe and touch. And really, um, that's the way that they learn, right? When we've got these youngest kids. Okay, so first of all, if it's warm enough in your area to go outside and look for insects and look for bugs, that's a great first step. Go outside and see if you can find some bugs. Um, just observe them, see if they're flying, see if they're on the sidewalk. We had a freeze warning here in Northern Virginia last night, and so there, are, there were no bugs out at nine o'clock. Um, I'm hoping it'll warm up and we can go out for a bug walk tomorrow, but I knew if we went out today, we would find zero bugs there all in hiding. Um, instead, I am going to introduce a different insect to our students during circle time each day. So I'm gonna share those four with you. Today, um, we just talked about what is an insect, um, what kind of insects do you know, or what kind of bugs do you know? And then I had it underneath, I should write over it, underneath a bandana, and I said, I have an insect to share with you. And they're like, is it a real one? Is it a stinging one? Is it gonna bite me? You know, I said, no, 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 it's just something to observe. And I brought out, oh, the light. Um, these are crickets. Crickets are a fantastic insect to observe because they're very lively, usually, unless they've, you know, um, they're super duper cheap. And if you put them in a glass box like this, the kids can really observe them. They can count their legs. They can see their long antenna. They don't bite, sting, get out. They're super. They're like the perfect insect to observe for an insect unit. Now, um, I buy these crickets at the pet store. At my pet store, they're eight cents a piece or 12 in a bag for a dollar. I think it'd be cheaper to spend eight cents a piece. Well, anyway, um, so you just get this big bag of them. They're called giant crickets and they're 12 for a dollar. And then I have these little um, containers. I have two of them and I put six in each. The bag of crickets comes with a piece of egg carton. 
so that the crickets can hide and climb. You could put leaves in there too, that would be totally fine. We just haven't had a chance to do that. And then if you're just going to observe them for a day, you don't need anything else in there because you're just gonna observe, observe them and then let them go. Um, we're planning to keep these. I bought them on Saturday and we're gonna keep them. We observed them today and I'm gonna keep them for my younger class on Thursday. So I didn't want them to dry up and die. So inside here, I put some of this calcium fortified cricket food. You can buy it at the pet store. Now, they sell crickets at the pet store because they're supposed to be fed to your reptiles. I feel like I am like saving them from their death row sentence, right? By bringing them into the classroom. So I give the kids in little groups these boxes. They can observe them. I don't mind if they pick them up. The lids on these are pretty sturdy. They can't get them open. And then at the end of the week, we let them go. They're native to Virginia, so it's totally fine. How cute are they? Adorable. <laughs> and it was a dollar. Like I said, you don't have to buy the cricket food. You could just put leaves and things in there, but I'm keeping them for a week and I didn't want dried up crickets. So I put some Fluker's Cricket Quencher in. Um, we have lots of books about crickets and so I can display everything over at the Science Center so that the kids can just observe. That's what we want is for them just to notice things like, oh look, he's got, you know, his back legs are bent and um, they don't have any wings. You know, just to observe um, the crickets up close. That's it. All right, the second, this is the easiest one. It's literally a dollar. You don't even have to put it in one of these fancy $3 boxes. You could just put it in a Tupperware container um, and just observe them for the day. Or take them outside and they can hold them. Um, they were seriously on death row, ready for a reptile's dinner. Um, so I feel like it's okay. The second easiest insect to bring in for your kids to observe are mealworms. Gemma is totally freaked out by the mealworms. She puts on a brave face when our students are here, but they gross her out. They don't bother me at all. Um, and I'll actually tell you some of the reasons that I love mealworms. Um, but if you haven't tried mealworms, I'm gonna tell you why they're awesome. So they sell those also at the pet store. They are also food for reptiles or turtle. I don't know what they're food for, snakes. Um, they're called super worms. Sometimes they're called mealworms. Sometimes they have them in the refrigerator. If they have them in the refrigerator, then these mealworms are um, dormant. So you're gonna wanna warm them up a little bit before you show them to your kids or they're gonna think they're all dead. So anyway, this 24 count mealworm at my pet store was $1.99. It's in the same section as the crickets. Um, and again, I feel like I'm doing them a service. Like they were destined for somebody's lunch and I'm saving them and bringing them into my classroom. Don't say yuck, I'm gonna tell you why they're so cool. So I take them out of this container and put them in some um, generic like Tupperware containers from the dollar store. To uh, keep these, all you have to do is put a little bit of oatmeal, dried oatmeal, and then you put the mealworms in there. You're gonna wanna keep it moist a little bit, a little bit wet, so you put a teeny thin slice of potato or a really thin slice of apple in here. I haven't done that yet because I just moved them over. Okay, now, these do not gross me out. I know they gross some people out, but they're not gross. So, they're not gross, I'll tell you why. So that's the little mealworm, can you see that little guy? He doesn't bite, he doesn't sting. You can give one like to each kid, and everybody's like, oh, totally gross. We had our kids actually set up like a mealworm like racetrack on the table to see whose mealworm was the fastest. They can measure them and like draw how long they are on a piece of paper. Um, they're super fun, when they turn black like this or they start to get really dark, it means that they're getting ready to molt or shed their exoskeleton. And so you'll actually find probably tomorrow, I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, Jamie, we didn't know you're so gross. <laughs> um, you can find their little exoskeleton, he just jumped off my hand. You can find their little exoskeletons in, the, in with the oatmeal. And so I'll have the kids, there's five in each. I'll have the kids count them, there's five mealworms. And then if they molt, you know, they might think it has died, but it's not dead, it's just shedding its skin because it can't grow. The cool thing about these are they go through the same life cycle as a caterpillar. So they pupate, you know, they make a little, like a chrysalis, but it's a little pupa. So it looks like a sleepy little white um, mealworm. I'll show it to you. And then guess what they turn into? Does anybody know? What does a mealworm metamorphosize into? Um, you'll stick to the crickets. They're not gross. They don't poop, they don't bite. They're super cute. It's like a cute little, cute little mealworm. <laughs> and they were $2 for 24 of them. Um, does anybody know what the mealworms turn into when they go through their life cycles? The kids usually don't know. 
which is really fun because they'll guess like is it going to be a butterfly is it going to be you know they don't have any idea um do you know what the mealworms turn into do you do you do you i'm going to show you what their um pupa looks like so you know they look like little um you know like little mealworms right and then they make this pupa after they molt and they look like this do you see that and so then the kids can count them you're like we have three larva and two pupa and then when they start to get really brown and curl this is when they first turn into their pupa sometimes if you're really lucky you can watch them molt and shed their exoskeleton and then turn into this pupa which is such a super cool process we've seen um a couple do that in class which is really awesome and then they start to get like this you can start to see their eye spots and then when they turn really brown like this you'll see their wings start to form and do you know what they turn into do you do you not a moth good guess it could be a dragon it's not <laughs> thank god <laughs> do you know what they're gonna turn into they turn into these beautiful beetles and the thing that i love about beetles is that they don't really fly the kind in here and they don't bite or you know what i mean they're really super easy so it takes a little bit longer like three weeks if they're warm like if you've got a warm climate or if you have a warm spot in your house with some sun, leave them there and they'll go through their life cycle faster. But they will turn into these little black English, I think they're English beetles. I don't know what kind of beetles they are. I think they're English beetles. And they need to eat corn or oatmeal, and then you can just let them go as long as they're native to your area, which they are around here in Virginia. So this is a really awesome life cycle to observe because a lot of times our kids are familiar with the butterfly caterpillar life cycle but not as familiar with the mealworm beetle life cycle and when you have two different examples of a life cycle they can start to make connections like oh, those mealworms remind me of the caterpillars or oh you know the mealworm turned into a beetle but the caterpillar turned into a butterfly that's you know it's the same but not exactly so we keep them for about a month until they change yeah Laura so super cool I highly recommend the mealworms when I was a brand new teacher, like 22 years old out of college, I was teaching, Kathy says no thanks, I was teaching second grade and one of our big science um, standards for the state is learning about life cycles of animals and comparing them to things that go through a distinct metamorphosis to animals that just grow up. And so I was trying, my whole team, I'm like, oh, I've got this great activity. We're going to compare the caterpillar life cycle to the mealworm life cycle to the human life cycle. This is going to be so cool. And I brought them in for everybody and they were all like, what? No way. <laughs> And I taught with that same group of ladies for six years, and by the end, they were like, when do we get our mealworms? That's such a cool science activity. Um, the good news is, you know, like, you can just keep them in here. You don't have to do anything to them. They don't have to be, like, watered or fed or anything. You can use a spoon if you're squeamish, and we poked some air holes, but they're super low maintenance, and the kids really do love them. So if you can try to get over your squirmishness or your fears of insects, this is such a cool and $2 experiment for preschoolers. Okay, so those are my first two. Crickets, mealworms. This video is longer than I thought it was gonna be. Here's my next one. So those two are super cheap. Like I said, like a dollar, two dollars. And then if you have a little bit of a budget, or if you don't have a budget and you have parents, maybe you could say like, would anybody like to donate these things to our classroom? There is a company called insectlore.com. I'm not sure how they are internationally. Um, and you can order lots of insects from them. Uh, we have two that I'm gonna share with you. So we just got these in the mail. They are ladybug, it's a ladybug land with ladybug larva. So I'm so excited to kind of unbox these. Happy growing and show you what we ordered. I think these were like $20 for the whole land. And so what you get is a vial of teeny tiny ladybug larva. Oh, the light is being weird. Anyway, they're so tiny you can barely see them. They're like this, like, like they're so teeny tiny little bitty crawly larva and they go inside this cute little ladybug land. So you get this self-contained um, ladybug, oh, see my light is doing a thing, hold on. You get like this little self-contained ladybug larva house, ladybug land, and you put the ladybugs, we'll do it tomorrow with our students, or Wednesday with our students. So you put them in this ladybug land, and then, you drip water onto this little volcano sponge thing, 
and they crawl all around inside of here and they go through the same metamorphosis, that same life cycle as the mealworms and the caterpillars. So they're a larva, then they turn into a pupa, and then they turn into ladybugs and you just open it up and let them go outside. So I love insect lore because they give you so many good resources. Um, you know, it tells you how to put your ladybugs in their little ladybug land. They give you this really um, handy guide for how to raise your ladybugs and what their life cycle looks like and what to do with them when they turn into adults. Um, everything I've ever ordered from them has become healthy, alive, and done exactly what they, you know, what it's supposed to do, which is go through the metamorphosis. And it comes in like three days. So I love, love, love insect lore. Um, I think they're a really great resource if you have the funds or if you could ask your director, your principal, or your parents for a donation to have actual insects in your classroom. Um, try these. My favorites are the ladybugs and then the one I'm going to show you, of course, which is, I'm going to have to get those out um, for our students. I try to just introduce one insect at each circle time so it's not total mayhem. So we did crickets today. The mealworms can save, they take forever. Um, I'm gonna do these that I'm gonna show you tomorrow and then the ladybugs on the third day. Okay, so inside here I have painted lady butterfly caterpillars. And I love to introduce these as I've got some babies, you know, to show you. Um, when I went circle time, I'm like, I've got some babies, we have to be so quiet, they're just teeny tiny babies. And they come in a cup of caterpillars like this cup of caterpillars. I ordered two because I have two classes so I figured we would each um, you know we would mark one for each class and inside I think there's five two one two this one has one two three four this one only has four um, four teeny tiny little painted lady caterpillars I think they're supposed to be five nope but one that one has five this one has four hmm Oh no, it has five. That one is just buried back here. Look, he's like made a little web. The kids do, you don't have to open these. If you get the big class set of caterpillars, which I've done before, then you have to put them each into individual vials with a little bit of this milkweed at the bottom. So this is ground up milkweed. It comes just like this. I just opened the box. It comes exactly like this. Um, and you just put that in there with the painted lady caterpillar. If you get a cup of caterpillars like this, then you don't have to do anything to it, which is probably better. So it just stays like this. The caterpillars start off like the size of my pinky. They're so tiny. Um, and then they get so big, you almost feel like they're not gonna fit in this cup. It's so cool. They eat all of this ground up milkweed and then their excretions, their caterpillar poop, are like little green balls, you know, which of course the five-year-old boys are like, caterpillar poop, cat, you know. Oh, that's so cool. They also molt just like the mealworms do. So you'll see the molted exoskeleton. It looks like a little black fuzzy head. Um, you can, it's really gonna be hard to see. You can see a couple of them right here from when they first molted, but they'll molt five or six times until you get like a pretty good size exoskeleton molted. You know, it's just this, ex, the exterior skin um, just comes right off as they grow because their skin doesn't stretch like ours. And we can talk about, isn't that so cool? Could you imagine if when you turn six or you turn five, if your skin all fell off like a snake or a caterpillar? That would be so crazy. Um, and so you'll see all the exoskeletons in there. And then they start to get a little sleepy and they crawl up onto the lid of the cup and hang in their J shape. If you catch it right, which I always hope we do, you can watch them wiggle out of their exoskeleton the last time. You'll see the little, you know, molted black fuzzy ball. And then they've got this beautiful chrysalis hanging from the lid. So you'll have five chrysalides hanging from the lid of your cup of caterpillars. And of course, you know, I'll share with you this week, but there's like nine million books and awesome things that you can do. When that happens, you take your lid from the cup of caterpillars and you just plop it right inside of this little loggy thing so that the, um, the lid is standing up and the caterpillar um, chrysalides, the pupa, are hanging down. And then what happens is um, you move that whole thing. And I bought the whole, um, I bought the whole kit this year 
because mine is honestly 20 years old. The first time I did this experiment, I was an undergraduate student um, in, edu in the education department learning about um, methods of teaching science. And the professor, and it's probably like 1997, brought in caterpillars for everybody and we had to you know, take them back to our dorm room and measure them and make journals about them. And I have done that lesson every single year since. So my butterfly net was like a little bit grody. Anyway, I bought the whole thing this year. And what you do is just pop this guy open. How cute is that? Put the little loggy log thing with the larva, I'm sorry, the pupa lid inside and hang it in your classroom. Or you can just set it down in your science area and then the students can watch and it takes like five days or so, not very long, maybe a week. And the butterfly, you'll start to see the, the shell of the chrysalis gets really translucent. You can see the um, pattern of the painted lady wings underneath and it just cracks open and the butterfly comes out and emerges from its chrysalis. There's, we'll talk a little bit more. I'll do a whole video just about this because there's a few things you, that um, is good to know about taking care of them and about what happens when they do come out of that chrysalis. Um, but anyway, this is a really awesome way to get caterpillars or to get insects right in the hands of your students in your classroom. So if you have the funds or if, um, you know, if you can get parents to donate, I recommend ordering a couple of things or one thing from Insect Lore. If you have no funds, run to the pet store and get yourself some nine cent crickets super easy the kids won't know any difference if you have an extra dollar you and you've got some guts you're not squeamish get yourself a couple of mealworms so that they can observe that metamorphosis order ladybugs order caterpillars or go outside on a bug hunt and have kids collect bugs and just bring them into your science center so that they can observe them because our preschoolers have to start with the tangible they cannot start talking about insects unless they are looking at an insect. Not a plastic insect, not a picture of an insect. Our kids have to be looking at the real actual thing. They have to see its size, they have to see that texture, they have to hear it. You know, they have to experience it in a very tangible way so that they can understand it fully. So those are my four ideas. That video was way longer than I thought it was gonna be. I love releasing the butterflies. Isn't that such a fun activity for springtime? Yes, 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 I love it too. Um, it's one of my very favorite things to do every year. So anyway, every day this week, I'm gonna be, we're gonna be on the ball because um, I have so many things to share with you in terms of art and books and activities to go with our insect unit. I left a link for insect lore up in the video description. I also left a link for our printable insect circle time unit, which goes through day by day, everything that we do with our students during circle time and some literacy and math centers. So I hope that's helpful to you. I hope you have a great afternoon playing and learning with your kiddos and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.